Hi everybody, I'm going to show you how to install Zymo Research Transmit and begin by being able to run, transmit your first set of data. So to start off, we're going to need to go to two web pages. We'll need the GitHub page open for Zymo Research Transmit. We'll also need to download a copy of the Python programming language to our computers. And this is all assuming you're on a Windows based system, which I think is pretty common in laboratories now. So starting off on the Python installer page, we're going to scroll down to the Windows uh, web-based installer. And we're just going to grab a copy of that. And we'll give it a run. And we'll do a customized installation. So we want to make sure that we have pip installed and that we have uh, TCLTK installed because that'll actually power our um, graphical user interface. We also want to make sure that we check off this box here to add Python to environment variables. And once we have that done, we'll be ready to install. So once we've installed, we can go to the GitHub page for downloading Zymo Research Transmit. We're going to click on this green code button and tell it to download zip. And once that's downloaded, I'm going to go over to my downloads folder and we'll see the download here. And for the purpose of this video, I'm just going to run it from my downloads folder, but you can run it from wherever happens to be convenient for you. So I'm going to just extract it. And in this case, it actually creates this folder, which is where the content lives. And just to make life a little bit easier, trim off the uh, repository name there. And as long as my Python installation was successful, I just need to double click setup here. And you may occasionally see this message. And tell it to run anyway. You can inspect the bat file, but all it's going to do is run the Python script. And you should see something that looks like this with these bars going across, and that's installing Python dependencies for you. And this can take a couple minutes to complete as it has a few different uh, dependencies put on, but there it goes. And for your next step, you should be able to click Run, and you're going to get possibly the same warning again, so just tell it to run anyway. And it's going to pop up with a file like this the first time. So this is where you're going to put in your laboratory info. So you just need to fill in after the colons. And you can fill in all of these values. It's absolutely critical that you put in your CLIA ID. Um, the program will start running into trouble if you don't put in your CLIA ID. Also put in your medical uh, director's information if you can. Uh, do pay attention to these uh, pound sign comments here, as some of them will give you hints on some of the values you need to put in. For your connection information, you will need to put in your gateway user, and you will need to put in your gateway password. You'll find those in a document that was sent to you by CalReady, and I'm going to blur them out, but You'll see your values here. You'll also need the client certificate password that's up here, and we'll see that in a few minutes. And so you'll need to fill out this gateway user value. You need to fill out this gateway password value. Um, you can just copy and paste into here with Control-C and Control-V from the uh, document. This value here is also very important. So right now it's set to true. Once you get approved by CalReady to go into production, you will just change this value to false. But that's only once you're approved to go into production. If you try to submit to production when you're not approved, you'll actually get back error messages. So I'm going to change this back to true. And I'm actually going to close down this file. But first, I want to save. So that's how you save the file. And I'm going to close this down. And then once you're done, just hit Enter. And that'll end the program. And you'll notice that you have a new file on here called config.txt, or 
just config if you're not showing the extensions. And in this case, I actually have a saved configuration over here. So I'm just going to copy that over here. And you can totally move your configuration files around between systems. Um, as long as you're using the same credentials, it's not going to be a problem. So I actually have a functional configuration in here. Next thing I'm going to do is move my certificate over as well. And this will give me the first thing to run to run on with a configuration. So I'm going to double click run again. And in this case, if I just pick the certificate file and tell it to open, it's going to prompt me for the certificate password. So all I need to do to get the certificate password is open up this file again. Copy that. paste it in there, and press OK. And you'll see here that it said converted certificate, so that means it worked successfully. And I can hit enter to quit. And I now have the program with a completed configuration and a, and a working certificate. So at that point, all I really need to do to be able to transmit is have some data to send up. So in this case, the data I'm going to send up is this template transmission. And here we see we have an example for what to send up. And in this case, it's not commented. If you want to keep this in here, just to give yourself a hint, you can always put the pound sign in front of that line. And a pound sign in front of any line will cancel it out. In this case, I don't want it there because I'm actually going to transmit this uh, mock test information, which happens to cover my dog. And the way I can transmit this, and I would do this to send up any other data, is I would double click run. And when it asks for a file, I'm going to give it template submission, which again is just a submission template. Tell it to open. And it's going to say successfully submitted, at which point I can hit enter to quit. And that completes the first submission.